Good morning, church. Welcome to our online worship service. As we prepare our hearts to worship God, allow me to encourage you with this verse. In Philippians 4, verse 4, it says here, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. You know what? When Paul was writing this, he was actually in prison. And yet he was able to send this letter of encouragement with joy to the Philippians, knowing that because, that the circumstances will not hinder him to be in joy, knowing that Christ is in him. And you know what? As we prepare our hearts to worship God, let that be our reality, that the same God is in us and we can choose to rejoice knowing that when God is in us, who can ever be against us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. You are worthy of all our praise. We even lift up to you, Lord God, our nation, that's despite the fact that it's been raining because of the Habagat, that there's been a surge because of, of the new Delta variant. And yesterday, we even experienced, Lord God, an earthquake. Lord, we stand here today surrendering this to you, knowing that you are still in control, that you still remain a God who is unshaken because of this circumstance. And we can come to you and we rejoice. We rejoice knowing that you are in us. And let that be our declaration today as we worship you. We worship you, Lord God, because we give you all the glory. We give you the thanks knowing that we can be confident in our hope that is in you, Father. So, Lord, we praise your name. And this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's worship God today. Blessed Sunday, people of God. Lord, thank you for today. Lord, we declare that you reign forever. We declare, Lord, that you are mighty in our lives, Lord. Lord, as we worship you, God, fill our hearts today with your presence in Jesus' name. There is none, there is none like you 
that the name of Jesus fill the earth. There is none, there is none like you. You reign the King forevermore. There is none, there is none like you. Let the name of Jesus fill the earth. There is none, there is none like you. Yes, Lord. 
This morning, we want to express our love. Heart open wide. We worship you, Lord God. And this time, Lord, we want to love you with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, with all our strength, Lord. In everything that we do, Lord, we want to honor you. And today, we want to give the highest adoration and praises you deserve. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Victory. We exist for only two reasons, and that is to honor God and to make disciples even online and on site. And before we continue the, our um, uh, service, we want to remind everyone that later we will be having our communion. So uh, please prepare a piece of cracker or bread and a glass of juice as we have our communion after. And today, um, we worship God through singing, but also we can worship God through our giving. So let me encourage you with this verse found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says here, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You see, church, we have to remember that tithing is giving to God what rightfully belongs to Him. It is a biblical principle uh, that brings abundance when obeyed, but will result in scarcity when disobeyed. The early um, Christian, ang kanila pong mark, of uh, the early church is their generosity. Remember, they are willing to give everything that they have for the sake and for at the feet, at the feet of the, uh, the apostle. So Paul wrote this verse so that we can also give with that obedient and thankful heart. And our giving is our expression of worship to God. Sabi nga, di ba, sa ating nabasa kanina, Lahat ay dapat magbigay ayon sa kanyang pasya, maluwag sa puso at hindi napipilitan. Because God knows if we are giving out of um, under compassion or reluctance. And He also knows if we are cheerful giver. So this morning, as we give, my prayer is that we will always remember that God knows the heart of man and He sees the motivation of our hearts. Let, let be our giving will be motivated by our obedience and our worship to Him and let us give to God what is rightfully belongs to Him. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, thank You, Lord God, for You are the one who brings wealth and You gives the ability to produce wealth and also You are the one who brings joy in our hearts as we give this morning. Lord, thank You for all the blessing that You bestow to us. Lord, today, as we give, we are... Um, we are happy, we, are, uh, we have this joyful spirit, we are cheerful hearts, Lord. With cheerful hearts, we're giving our tithes and our offering because you deserve the best from us. Lord, may we, you continue to bless each and every tither and giver as we give, Lord God, today. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Partnering with missions, every nation, and real life is now easier as we have updated giving site at victory.org.ph slash give. And also, you can give your um, uh, tithes and offering through our um, GCash. The QR code is appearing on your screen. And also, you may uh, give through direct deposit. The details are also in your screen. Or if you want to visit or um, drop your um, tithes and offering, our center is open every Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. to receive your tithes and offering. Let us remember whether we give online and on-site, let's continue to honor God through our wealth. And to know more about our giving um, uh, options, let's watch this video.
Good morning, Victory Quezon Avenue. Welcome to our 9 a.m. online worship service. We are so glad that you are joining us in our um, live streaming via Facebook. And uh, we trust that you are actually safe and you are also in faith in the midst of um, the natural calamities that's happening, that's typhoon, and uh, even the yung lidol po, kanina, kaapon po ng umaga, and in also uh, what the global pandemic is experiencing, we believe that the Lord, our God, is still in control and He will, go, he will be strengthening our faith and look to Him as the source of all comfort and all grace. My name is Noel Nanez and I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Quezon Avenue. If you're joining us for the first time because maybe you were invited online to join us by someone they actually care for you because they want you to have your faith strengthened in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the reason why we uh, want to welcome you if you're joining us for the first time. Thank you to our Victory Group leaders to, uh, who are still joining us even in the midst of you know, what we are doing in this live broadcast. You are still helping us honor God and make disciples. That is who we are in Victory Honoring God and making disciples is the vision that God has given to all of us. In fact, we just like to um, um, uh, give time to our Victory Group leaders to introduce themselves so that you, will, uh, uh, you who are listening will have an opportunity to know who can be uh, uh, praying for you or standing with you in faith as you journey your life together. Alam niyo po, marami mga nangyayari sa paligid natin. Maybe some of you are uh, going through the loss of a loved one, the loss of a business, the loss of work. But we believe in the midst of all this loss, let the Lord be our strength. Can you type amen po in our chat box? So once again, thank you so much, Victory Group leaders, for introducing yourselves um, in our chat box. And if you need someone to pray for you, okay, they are the ones who can are, who are trained and who are willing to pray for you. All right, so today we are on our last topic on uh, last week on ability to produce wealth. And we looked at how important it is to po focus on the chapter of Deuteronomy 8 and really exegete the truth of the Word of God and how it can be best applied in our situation. But before that, again, I'm going to be posting a question to everyone. I would uh, actually have two. Isa po ngayon, and then later on in the, in the middle part of uh, our preaching, I will again be posting another question. I would encourage everyone to come and join our uh, interactive babasahin po natin as much as we can, all of your comments. Here's the question. Share your insights. Are you believing God for your financial breakthrough? Who's exciting na question ito. And then if you are believing God for your financial breakthrough, why? Okay, share with us your insights. Why do you think God is going to bless you? And uh, through this series on ability to produce wealth, our hearts need to learn more deeply about God's covenant promise of provision. You see, the Lord Himself was the one who initiated this covenant. And included in this covenant is actually the covenant of provision. Therefore, we are going to look at our attitude towards finances, which ultimately reflects our heart before God. Ang pera po kasi, nagmamagnify po yan with whatever the condition of your heart is. That is why we had to look at how Moses prepared the Israelites before they would even enter the promised land, a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And likewise, we will also see how his provision is a tool for God's kingdom and God's purposes. Uh, together, we will head on a journey with a desire to grow in faithfulness and in fruitfulness most especially in the area of our finances. Ang gusto po ni Lord, maging faithful tayo sa Kanya at maging patuloy-tuloy po yung fruitfulness natin so we can have a deeper and more meaningful understanding of our covenant relationship with Him. As I mentioned in the, a few minutes ago, you know, there is an establishment of God's covenant for all of us. Ito pong covenant na ito, win-win po ito sa atin. 
it isn't our desire to put God in a covenant. It is actually God's desire to bring a covenant for all of us, which is actually based not on just something that's written, but it is based on the relationship. Gusto po ni Lord, meron siyang relationship sa ating lahat. Gusto niya, masaya ka. It isn't just about God being God and that's why He established a relationship for us to worship Him. No, it's actually a win-win situation for all of us because in this covenant, God wants us to enjoy our relationship with Him. So that is why for the past three weeks, we looked at uh, the covenant of um, obedience, the covenant of um, uh, uh, trust, and the covenant to really move on and, and continue with what the Lord has established for all of us in this covenant. Also, the trust to remember Him. In the midst of whatever we go through in life, we ought to remember Him. Today, we will be focusing on the covenant of provision, which is the charge to stay on the mission. Let's all bow our heads right now and pray as we begin our service, our preaching. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful, Lord, that you found, it, you found us, God, and you want to establish that covenant relationship with us, God. We are grateful, Lord, in the midst of whatever is happening around us, it is you, Lord God, who will keep us protected, Father. It is you, Father God, who will strengthen our faith, Lord. And today, as we look at your scripture, as we look at your word, help us through the power of the Holy Spirit understand what we ought to learn, Father, in this series and even in this week. Holy Spirit, would you anoint the preaching of your word today? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so we are now going to, we are trying to, um, Listen now or read some of your comments kung bakit ka gustong i-prosper na ating Panginoon. Let me just, uh, please give me a few minutes to uh, listen to uh, or read your comments. Ang sabi po dito, okay, let's see. Ayan. Okay, let's read first uh, Bernadette. Bernadette TV says, um, yes, believing God for financial provision, she said, because God is our great provider. Sabi rin po ni Rona, yes, God promised us a prosperity. I like that. You know, sa covenant ni God, you know, prosperity is um, not limited to finances. Meron niyang health, meron niyang peace sa ating buhay. Gerard uh, said he's the source of everything. God owns everything. Ryan, uh, sabi niya, I believe God in every way. Whoo, come on, Ryan. My finances and what I have today is something that God blessed me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Absolutely, sabi ni Ina, I believe in God for our financial breakthrough. He has shown me, He's shown it before when the pandemic was not yet here, what more up to now? Tama nga naman, napaka-faithful ni Lord. And He has been blessing our family according to our needs. Great is thy faithfulness! Exclamation point with a prayer emoticon. Sabi ni Chela, hi Chela. Okay, yes, I believe God will give me my financial breakthrough because just like what is written in Psalm, may quote pa siya ng Bible verse, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those who walk uprightly. I like that verse. I like that verse. And then Red said, Thank you so much for the time and dedication you've put forth to see souls saved and for teaching us ways to stay in, good, in the good fight as well as to overcome time and time again victoriously. Ay, sa akin pala to. Thank you so much, Pastor Noel. Blessing on you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Rhett. May the blessing of the Lord also be with you. Alright, so, um, kaya po natin bibigyan ng pansin ngayon, why do you think God is giving us the financial breakthrough? It's because we are looking at how we can stay on course in the midst of the blessing and the prosperity that God is about to give to you. Remember, it is a relationship with God. 
Yes, there may be challenges along the way, but that doesn't make God be, uh, you know, forget what is stipulated in the covenant. In the midst of whatever we go through, God is still faithful. And He will make sure that whatever He promised us, He will continue to give it to us. All we have to do is to stay on course. Yan po yung topic natin for today. That is why we're going to look at four indispensable reminders for us to stay on God's mission. These are reminders. On the other side of this reminder, it's likewise an imperative. So therefore, when we look at these imperatives from the Lord, let it remind us, Oo nga pala, meron akong mission. Kaya ako nilagay ni Lord dito sa kanyang simbahan because God wants to accomplish something in me and through me. Staying on God's mission. Why do I have to stay on God's mission? We've looked at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and um, Moses reminded the Israelites before they entered the promised land that this is what they ought to do. So therefore, chapter 9 now, as we end our series, we will be focusing on how you're going to stay on the mission. Preparation po ito, mga kapatid. Number one indispensable reminder for us to stay on God's mission is that there are new territories to conquer and inhabit. New territories to conquer and inhabit. Remember, God spoke to Abraham, the forefather of the Israelites, that he has already given him a land. It's the Canaanite, Canaanite land. Pero nangyari po, the Israelites were in slavery for the next 400 years. And then they went to the desert. Pero hindi po yun ang issue. Ang issue po, God is still faithful. Kahit 400 years na ang nakalipas, He will still make that promise come to pass. That is why we want to encourage everyone, there are new territories to conquer and inhabit. I have no idea po kung ano po yung pinapakonquer ni Lord sa atin by faith and how He wanted us to inhabit them. But I trust that the Word of God and the Spirit of God will be the one to communicate that to everyone. Let's read from Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 1. Sabi niya dito, Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today to go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than you, cities that are great and fortified up to heaven. Now, how many of us believe that, you know, the Israelites, before they would even cross the promised land, grabe, may pagsubok. Sabi niyo dito, nations that are greater and mightier, cities that are great and fortified. Imagine up to the heaven. Now, I could probably just say, Lord, what is this, God? Before you would even give me the blessing, Lord, I still have to conquer. I still have to fight. I still have to uh, do it in faith. Now, how many of you believe that the Lord wants us to have the spirit of victory? It will never be about us, but it will always be about you. Could it be that the reason why the Israelites were facing this great and fortified cities, these walls that are greater and higher and stronger that reaches up to heaven because they would soon realize, hindi ako ito, hindi ko kakayanan ito. But I believe the Lord our God is going to work in and through, uh, through us. When we talk about this particular topic, it says there, Moses had to remind, or God had to remind Moses to tell the Israelites, you are to cross over the Jordan today. The conquest of the promised land, as originally spoken by God to Abraham, is not to be sought as a result of their own meritorious behavior, but by the sovereign choice of the Almighty God. Meron pong sovereign choice si Almighty God. That is why He wanted the Israelites to conquer new territories, and inhabit new land. The goal was not to free the Israelites out of the slavery. 
Because nung na-free na sana nila at na-plunder nila Egyptians, edi eh sana tapos na yung storya. Hindi, they were traveling and they were facing the Red Sea. The goal is not just to uh, 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 um, cross over the Red Sea because when you look at the crossing over the Red Sea of the Israelites, it was the greatest miracle seen in the Bible. Then the God, they continued the journey. And for the next 40 years, they were in the wilderness. The goal is not just deliverance. The goal is not just looking at the miracles. There is more land, territories, and, 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 and opportunities for us to conquer and inhabit. Ganun po si Lord. Gusto niya malakas tayo. Not just tayo, but malakas ang faith natin sa Kanya. Because to begin with, it is the Lord who will give us the grace and the strength. That is why never about our meritorious behavior, but it's always going to be the sovereign choice of God. Let me give you some pointers on what this is all about. You see, God foretold that the descendants of Abraham will be sojourners in the, and slaves in Egypt. And then He said likewise that they will be slaves for the next 400 years and be set free by a deliverer. Yung po si Moses. And then God asserted that Egypt will be judged and the Israelites will plunder the Egyptians. A little bit of history here. And then God promised the Israelites will be brought back to the promised land. Ito yung promised land na sabi ni God kay Abraham, leave your people, leave your country, your household, and go to the land. Ando na si Abraham, pero several hundred years, the Israelites and the descendants of Abraham, was, they were not there, they were in Egypt. But God had to bring them back there, uproot them, and plunder the nation of Egypt, and bring them to a spacious land. Preparasyon po ang ginagawa ni Lord para sa bansa, at para sa mga Israelites. In the same way, I believe that God is preparing you for something bigger, greater, and more impactful. Our faith has to be stronger. In the midst of the typhoon, in the midst of the earthquake, in the midst of this global catastrophe, the pandemic, in the midst of this new variant in COVID, sabi na D, ngayon may D plus na. In the midst of all that, God wants us to conquer, to have our faith be based on His strength and not our strength. The challenges we face may be overwhelming. There are challenges that we are facing. And I'm pretty sure that there are many of you watching us today we have our personal challenge, our family challenge that we have to face. But face it. This cannot be a deterrent for us to conquer and redeem new territories for God. Because we cannot just be overwhelmed by what we are going through. Yes, God knows what we are going through. And I'm not going to ask God to remove that pain. Because maybe that's part of His process of preparing us to inherit what He promised in the covenant. That's why let it not be a deterrent. In the same way, the victories we receive and the success we experience, though it also can be intoxicating. Kasi nga, di ba, as I mentioned last Sunday, merong isang uh, nakausap ako, he earned his first million. So, siyempre, pwede na, relax na tayo, Lord, chill, chill na tayo, Lord. No, it can be intoxicating, but prayerfully, it will not slow us down to continue believing God for new territories to be restored back to Him. That is why I ask you the question, are you believing God for financial breakthrough? Bakit? I'm not saying na, na, na masama yung mag-relax, relax. It's part. God wants us to enjoy what He has blessed us with. But at the same time, let cannot be intoxicated by such prosperity and blessings because there is, a, there is a mission that we have to be on course. Kailangan po natin gawin yan. Victory Quezon Avenue is not exempt with challenges brought about by the pandemic. There were a lot of uh, things that we had to face. There were challenges in, in, in our finances. You know, we have to, um, to say goodbye to, to some of our staff because, because they volunteered. 
But we believe that in the midst of whatever is going through, we, it, this cannot stop us. There are moments we're in when we got this facility, ang sarap na mag-enjoy, mag-relax. Pero after a year or so, bigla nag-pandemic, whoo, nawala yung excitement ng center natin. And then more so, nagkaroon ng challenge. Are we going to keep our vision afloat? Are we going to keep the church afloat? It's going to become a blessing. I am here as God gave me the position and the title to lead this church. We are here to stay on course. Can you say amen? Yes, magpapahinga ka because of the challenges. Yes, you enjoy mo, yung breakthrough mo. Yes, but stay on God's course. Victory Quezon Avenue is going to launch our first outreach. And this is Victory Quezon Avenue Kubao Outreach. Are we there already in financial breakthrough? No, we're not there yet. But by faith, we know it's not about us, Lord. It's about you. And we're excited to do an outreach in another city or another place in Quezon City. And that is in Cubao. And we have been doing that when I was still in Victory Ortigas. Sabay pong pinanganak yung Timog, which is where we are now, and Cubao. Pero na-derail po yung Cubao because of the pandemic and many other reasons. But we are here right now. God is telling us, are we ready to move? New conquers, new conquests, new territories to inhabit. For the past year, our outreach in Cubao has been moving on. We had a series of prayer meetings. We had a series of leaders' conversions. We had the God Test evangelism trainings. And we have uh, weeks off doing uh, uh, big groups. Big group is a way we're in after the preaching of God's Word. There is going to be small groups that will be discussing what the, big, uh, what the preaching was all about. And then yesterday, we had a powerful event entitled Managing Stress 2021. Thank you, Ken Guillermo, for allowing us to go through this particular webinar. Why do we do that? Because we want to have initial you know, efforts to, for us to inhabit a new territory. Pray with us. On-site victory groups at Jollibee, Ali Mall, and Times Square Food Park are happening from July this month up to September. In fact, ENC Anonas Outreach, which is also a, a part of our efforts in, uh, in, uh, in Cubao, we have efforts or outreaches in Quirino High School, World City College, Technological Institute. We are continuing with the conquest of a new territory. Pray with us because on September 18, we are going to be establishing our first online worship service and on-site in Victory, uh, Quezon Avenue, Cubao Outreach. We will be doing this at the second floor of Jollibee. Pray with us, including Pastor Junko and Neil, as we continue moving on. New territories to conquer. New land to inhabit. Kung ano man pong pinagdadaanan natin, good man yan or bad man yan, let us continue to stay in God's mission. Can you say amen? Pray with us as we do this. Likewise, we are not only conquering um, different uh, uh, places in our city, and even in our nation, we want to make sure that as a church, we go on with the mission. As every nation, as Victory Quezon Avenue is part of a global movement called Every Nation, we want to make sure that there are also new territories, new lands, new countries that we're going to inhabit and conquer. This, um, this week or last week, we have actually sent out one of our best uh, senior pastors, and that is Pastor Rico Rico Ford, together with his family. They are pioneering a church plant in the nation of Panama. 
we are believing and standing with Him that there is going to be an establishment of Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in Panama. That is who we are as victory. Our faith has to be staying on course. Why is it? Because God wants us to accomplish His will for our lives and for the lives of other people. My encouragement to everyone, stay on course. Remember that there are new territories, new uh, places to conquer and inhabit. The second um, point on how to have an in indispensable reminder for us to stay on course is that there are new battles to win and new giants to face. New battles to win and new giants to face. Eto na. When we are entering Cubao, is it just served to us in a silver platter? No, it won't. When we are entering Panama, they are, are they, uh, will the enemy just uh, welcome uh, us, our efforts, our Pastor Rico's effort? No, he's not. He's not going to take it sitting down. There are new battles to win and new giants to face. Kaya importante, my faith, our faith, your faith is stronger, deeper in the Lord. Because of such, look at how God reminded Moses to the people. Verse 2 and verse 3. A people great and tall, the sons of Anakim, whom you know, and of whom you have heard it said, who, sh who shall stand before the sons of Anak? This is the time wherein the Israelites were facing giants in the land. Remember when Moses sent out spies to, um, uh, to spy out the land? The ten spies said, the land is good, Moses, but there were giants in the land, and we are like grasshoppers to them. But they took two, Joshua and, and, and Caleb. They said, yes, there are, there are giants in the land, and we seem like grasshoppers, but our God is stronger than them. Here you are, many years after, they're still facing those giants, the descendants of Anakim the descendants of Anak, and they still have the same giant to face. The question is, and I want to hear from you, have you identified the giants that you need to face today? How are you conquering your giants these days? Yes, ang sarap pakinggan, new territories to conquer, new, new opportunities to, uh, to inhabit, galeng. But with those new things, there will be opponents, giants as we say it. Have you identified them? And how are you conquering them? Tell us, what is it? What are the giants that you're trying to face right now? And how are you facing them? The Israelites were given by God the opportunity to cross over the Jordan, and to inhabit the land that promised, that was promised to Abraham, their lolo, their great, great lolo. But it is not just going to be given to them on a silver platter, or there will not be an assembly of welcome. There will be great people that they will have to dispossess, giants to conquer. But we have to stand firm in the Lord. What about you? What are your giants? And how are you conquering your giants these days? Is it going to be health? It's go is it going to be your age? I'm 55, and I'm not exactly in the pink of health, but I'm conquering my giant by establishing a healthy lifestyle. And just like what, what Caleb said, I am 85 years old, and I'm still as strong as when Moses brought me out to spy the land. Now give me that territory. I want that, Lord. What about you? What are your giants? And how are you facing them? Are you facing them head on? And are you facing them with the love and the strength of God? Norma said, new territories and boundaries to conquer and inhabit. That's good. I pray that everyone would see the strength and the grace that God has given to us within the covenant. Verse 3 says, Know therefore today that you 
that he who goes before you as a consuming fire is the Lord your God. He will destroy them and subdue them before you, and you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as the Lord has promised you. In short, God said, yes, meron kayo mga descendants of Anak, and they are giants in the land. It's impossible for you to conquer this great cities with, with fortified walls. But God said, I will be with you. I will conquer them for you. But you just have to face the giants. You face that impossible situation. That is why kahit ano man pong pinaghinaharap natin ngayon, we face them with the grace that God has given to all of us. Can you say amen? Praise God. Those whom God casts off were spurred because of their idol worship and wickedness. That is what God wanted us to understand. Bakit niya dinidispossess yung mga descendants of Anak? Because they were idolatrous and rebellious and wicked. And God said, I'm going to give you the grace to inherit the promised land. The third indispensable reminder for us to stay on God's mission is that there are new divine realizations to understand fully. It isn't about our strength, but it's about the divine supreme being whose power and might is readily available for all of us. Verse 4 says, Do not say in your heart, after the Lord has, has thrust them out before you, it is because of my righteousness that the Lord has brought me to possess this land, whereas it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out before you. Divine revelation po ito, mga kapatid. Kasi ang gusto ni Lord, people will be reconciled back to Him. But those descendants then were rebellious. And God is raising up a generation of Israelites who will conquer the land so that the land will be inhabited by them and the worship of the one true God will be given to God. Verse 5, not because of your righteousness or uprightness of your heart are you going in to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of these nations, your God is driving them out before you. And that He may confirm the word that the Lord swore to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, God pa rin po ang sovereign about all of the things that's happening. At one point, staying on course, that He will cleanse the land from wickedness and sin. Staying on course for us, the upright, to inherit the promised land. But staying on course likewise, that it isn't about human effort, but the supreme being who's given us the grace and the power and the promise in our lives so that we can stay on course. Verse 6 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness. Walang pogi, walang bida. Pero ang bida, si Lord. Because He said, For you are a stubborn people. At to be honest, hanggang ngayon, matigas pa rin po ang ulo ko. Marami pa rin po, from time to time, na hindi na pinapagawa ni Lord sa akin, na kinikwestion, Lord, bakit ko gagawin to? But, but it's not about me. It's about Him. And lo and behold, I am still here standing before you. And by the grace of God, I will stay on course. Those whom, whom He welcomes were not accepted for their own merits. For no one is righteous, not even one. God is the only one. It is His sovereign choice for us to give you what He has promised for you. And part of His sovereign choice, His ultimate grand timing for us to accomplish with. Whether that will be given to us this year, or just like the Israelites after 400 years, whatever it takes, we will continue to stay on course because God has established this covenant for all of us. Finally, the fourth indispensable reminder is that there is a new passion to fulfill God's mission as He gives us the ability to produce wealth. I want to bring back again to what Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, where he said, 
you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, that He may confirm His covenant that He swore to your forefathers as it is today. You want to know the reason why God is going to give us the financial breakthrough? It's because in the midst of that breakthrough, He wants us to continue to stay on course with Him. He wants us to understand, my son, my daughter, I've given that ability to produce wealth, and it is my promise to you that you will stay in this covenant relationship with me. My final point is that understanding God's provision within the covenant relationship leads us to obedience and ultimately become God's agents of transformation and conduits of blessings. Why are we going to be prospered by God? Because He wants to be intimate with us and He wants to be faithful to us. And more so, He wants every one of His children to become conduits of His blessings. Do you believe that? Let's all bow our heads right now and pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. What an important reminder for us, Lord. Our trust to obey, our trust to remember, our, our, our trust, God, to put our faith in you, and even the trust to stay on course. May this be, Father God, an important reminder for all of us, wherever we are, God, whether we're already experiencing the breakthrough or whether ang layo pa ng breakthrough na to, help us, Lord God, be on course in our faith in You. In fact, if you are here and you not haven't give, be given the opportunity to be part of God's course in the gift of salvation, let me give you an opportunity to be prayed over. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time, Pray this prayer and say, Father God, I make a decision today to turn away from all my sins and from all the wickedness of, of my life. I turn to you, Jesus, for the forgiveness of my sins. I receive you as my Savior. I receive you as my Lord. I surrender everything to you, Father, and I'm receiving the gift of eternal life by faith. Thank you for writing my name in your book of life. Thank you for allowing me to be on your course in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, our Victory Group leaders are on a standby. They're willing to journey with you in your newfound faith in the Lord. In fact, they're, they're putting their messages uh, online right now. Talk to them at the end of the service. Lord God, we are grateful, Father, in the midst of difficulties that we may be experiencing, Lord. Let our faith, Father God, rise up. Let there be, Father God, indispensable reminders, Lord, that we ought to stay on course, God. Good times, bad times, stay on course, my son and my daughter. And we are thankful, God, that what you've done for all of us through Jesus Christ has thus far strengthened our faith and relationship with you. Today, we are going to be partaking of communion. I want for everyone to uh, prepare your, your biscuit and your juice as I will be leading you in communion. I'm going to give time for everyone to get your juice and your cracker as we're going to be preparing for communion. Let me read to everyone what the Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he betrayed, he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. So, Father, we are thankful, Lord God, for giving us, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, Father. As we partake of this bread right now, I want us all to get your bread, your cracker. We are grateful, God, that the body of Jesus Christ, nailed on the cross, Lord, has paid the penalty for all of our sins. And as we partake of this bread, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for all of us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Let's eat our breads right now. Father, the blood of Jesus Christ has shielded, Lord, and has sealed this covenant that you established for all of us. Your word also says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And as we partake, Lord God, this juice, Father, we remember the blood of Jesus as the seal of our covenant relationship with God. It is the blood of Jesus that cleansed us from all our sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us new life in Jesus' name. Let's partake from the cup right now. So, Father, partaking of communion, Lord, is our way to remember what you have accomplished for all of us. Truly, Father, you are an amazing God. Regardless of what we are facing, Lord God, help us focus on you and what your Son, Jesus, has accomplished for all of us. Thank you, Lord God. We, re we, we, we bless your name, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that in our worship, Lord, you will inhabit the praises and the worship of your people. May we be forever grateful, God, for this covenant relationship with, with you made for us. And likewise, may we always remember that it is you who gives us the ability to produce wealth. Help us to stay on course in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all just worship the Lord and enjoy His presence. Thank you.
Yes, Lord, we honor you and we praise you, Lord God, and thank you for the preaching of the word so that we always remind ourselves that you alone, Lord God, has the power to give us the ability to produce wealth. Thank you, Lord God. Before we end our service, I would like to share what uh, Hannah Grace Lom Franco said in our uh, comment section. She said, In whatever challenges we have and we might face, God is always by our side to keep us stronger and to overcome those things. And as we receive provisions and breakthroughs, we must look on to God to give thanks and to keep our faith on track to Him and to stay praising Him because God is our ultimate master. Thank you, Hannah, Grace, for sharing that. And as we end our service, you know, we will always remember that God made a covenant with us, His beloved people. And He confirmed His covenant by giving us the power to produce wealth not for us, our own sake, but also to bless our family. Imagine nyo po, ah, sa family in blessing, and also it will continue to, uh, to our communities. That's why we're uh, reaching uh, Kubaw, di ba? outreach natin, and also to our nations as well. You know, church, we have to uh, um, remember, and always uh, God reminded us to take charge, to obey Him, to remember Him, to trust Him, and to stay on course as we continue to honor God and make disciples for the rest of our lives. Receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you everyone for joining us to, uh, to, uh, today. So I uh, hope to see you again. Next week, keep safe everyone. God bless you.